Uh-oh, guess what day it is? This is Alias Chuck Finley from Talking Whatever Wednesday. I got some special guests here today uh, to host a great podcast that I love. I hope that you love them too. In fact, I'm going to say, if you somehow know my podcast and haven't heard of theirs, you're living your life wrong. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Uh, I've got George and Joe from, t- from Does This Still Work. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for uh, having yeah. us. Thank you for having us, Chuck. And thank you for kissing our ass just to uh, for that introduction. That was great. We don't get yeah, that. That very will stick often. around. Like the, that, that was usually... a heartfelt flattery. I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant that <laughs> truly. I mean, not... the, this must be how our guests feel when we fawn over them. I mean, right now I have so few listeners. I call them Ivy League. <laughs> but I mean, so for me right now, I'm just doing this for fun. This is just. Whatever I can do to have a good time for me right now. I, I get to just talk about stuff that I find interesting. I don't have to worry about, you know, somebody else saying, don't do that. You know, we, don't, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. I mean, maybe I'll do that eventually, but, um, but yeah, I've people, had... We make, make people pay us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about make them pay well, us. Well, if they want to <laughs> tell us what to do, they pay us. Um so again, thank you guys for being here. Um, I got you guys on to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time. Even though watching it back, it is, it is really, really bad. And that's what I wanted your humor for. Humor for. 1982's The Beastmaster. Yep. Can you tell me, what is your relationship to this movie exactly? My relationship? Um, I saw it first when I was probably like four or five years old, and I've loved it ever since. It didn't have to make a whole lot of sense then. I'm sorry, my son is coming into the room. I could tell. Is that a door or is that your son? <laughs> Those are his bones. No, that that was the door. Th- oh, thanks for thanks for the drawing, buddy. Aw. <laughs> it's just. You really gotta oil that thing. It sounds like you're in a yeah. haunted house. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks a lot. He, he drew a picture of a butt, and it says poop, and there's obvious a fart coming out of the butt. I will take a picture of this and send to you guys. Thank it's you. It's amazing. I love it so much. That's what I need <laughs> in my life. How old is your kid? He's, he's 10. 42. <laughs> no, he's, he's the youngest. He's 10. Um, I got a daughter who's 15, and our oldest son is 17. So, yeah. We thought we were done with diapers, and then, hey, one more. <laughs> Yeah, George knows that story. Yep. Yeah, we oh, had yeah. a we had a an oops, and then like five years later we had a eh, okay, and then we had a one of us is getting fucking fixed. Those are the best ones, aren't they? The the last mm-hmm. one where you're like, all right, we have to do something here. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, I just loved the Beastmaster ever since I was a kid, and didn't really find any faults with it until watching it later after like a decade had gone past between views and I was like, Oh wow, this, this is amazing. It's not it's amazing what I for a lot of reasons. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. So it was uh, directed by Don Coscarelli. The only movie I've ever seen of his besides this was Bubba, Bubba Hotep starring Bruce Campbell. Uh, 10 points. If you get where my alias comes from, uh, uh Freaking burn notice. Burn notice, yes. Yeah. Uh, it was written by Don Cascarelli and Paul where can Pepperman. I spend these, where can I spend these points? Uh, I'll, send you the, I'll send you the link. Don't worry. We'll, all we'll right. get all that later on. We'll square that away. Uh, let's see. It stars Mark Singer as Dar. 
Um, I only know him from Batman the Animated Series as the voice of Man Bat and Dr. Kirk Langstrom. And that's it. Um, apparently he was also in the series V, which I've never mm -hmm. seen. But that's where I've seen him before. I didn't check his credits. I knew I'd seen him somewhere before. Okay, See, I used to watch V. I had a feeling older members listening to this might have seen that. So I was going to throw that in there. Well, I mean, the guy looks like a mashup between, like, Mark Hamill and Kevin Bacon. Doesn't he? Oh, so, yeah. Um, then we got Bo Jacoby as Younger Dar. And he was also in Cujo as uh, Brett Camber. Uh, I guess the other kid in the movie. Uh, then we have Tanya Roberts as Kiri. She was in Charlie's Angels in the last series, last season of that. And she played yep. Midge Pinciotti on that 70s show. And there was one picture of her, if you search her on the internet, like one of the first two that show up, that is not a flattering picture of her at all. Oh. She does not look like she's aged well. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of sad, actually. Uh, let's see, then we got Rip Torn as Mayax. He was in Airplane 2, the sequel, mm -hmm. in, in 82. Robocop 3, just listed as OCP CEO. They couldn't even give the guy a name, that's awesome. Uh, Men in Black 1 and 2 as Zed. Yep. He was in the um, Tom Green classic Freddy Got Fingered in 2001 and won, won a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Supporting Actor. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Well, when, he's probably too, too drunk to notice. Or maybe he, he's so drunk he showed up for the ceremony. Oh, man. And in this movie... He... Rip, Rip basically loved his booze, apparently. He's dead now, yep. isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's passed on, yeah. And in this movie, he looks like a knockoff Klingon. <laughs> uh, 2004. That is the fakest nose I've ever seen in my goddamn life. I, I really couldn't tell if that was makeup or not looking at him. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't tell if he's aged better or if that was just, I, I don't know. I, who knows? Was it makeup? It was definitely makeup. Yeah. Which, by the way, I found very interesting that uh, Tanya also was wearing makeup. <laughs> like, yeah. How was this possible? It's it's nice that they let the slave girls wear makeup. Right, right. We'll get into the slave girls a little bit later on too. That's, mm -hmm. whew. Um, let's see. Uh, oh no! So don't forget, Rip Torn also was uh, in the uh, the what, not the Gary Shandling show, the uh, the the show he did on HBO that everyone loved. Everybody loved. I can't Rip remember Torn? the name of. Do they love Rip Torn that in a great the? Show. <laughs> there was a little bit of a He was in the Gary Shanley show that was like very popular. Where Gary Shanley played basically a, not, a, a version of Johnny Carson and uh, ran for a couple of years. And that's I think that's his biggest credit. And of course, I can't remember what the name of that film was. I'm uh, sorry, TV show. Well, <laughs> folks, you can write in and, and uh, tell Chuck what it was. <laughs> I'm not going to look it up right now. Again, that's uh, talkingwhateverwednesday at gmail.com for any of your uh, <laughs> comments and. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, then uh, he was in uh, Dodgeball, a true underdog story, as Patches or Hula Hand in 2004. Yep. Which was actually really funny. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge you a can ball. You can dodge a ball. Yep. Uh, coming to John Amos as Seth. He was in uh, Coming to America and Coming to America, the sequel. Yep. He owned McDowell's, the knockoff yes. McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 that was the best part of that movie. I love the the whole knockoff thing, where he's got their corporate manual and like covering it up when someone comes in the room. Whoa, what? I wasn't looking at anything. What? 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 You know? Yeah, that's that was a solid joke in an otherwise really bad movie. <laughs> um, let's see. He was in uh, Lock Up in 1989, starring uh, Sylvester Stallone, and Die Hard 2 in 1990. And then uh, King Zed was played by Rod Loomis, who was... Why you, well, don't look pass over John Loomis' most famous credit, even though you you two children don't know it. Good times! Good times, any time you need some credit! Good times, any time you feel free! Good times! Aren't you glad you invited this us was on? The... I, I was going to let that go for as long as he wanted to go with it. I mean, <laughs> please. <laughs> I mean, I, I know of good times. I never saw good times. I know, Dino My. That's that's all I got. But you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that drove that drove him off the show because he wanted a he wanted a. Uh, I mean, normally it was known for doing serial comic sitcoms, so he wanted a uh, an important sitcom about a black family, and then 
JJ blows up with dynamite, and suddenly it's like, this has now become caricature. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, okay. So it wasn't always supposed to be a comedy. It was supposed to be a real, heartfelt, genuine television show, and then morphed into something else. Is that... It morphed into a really bad sitcom. Well, not bad as far as the audience is concerned. The audience loved it. But yeah, he... he it, Norman, for you guys who don't know, Norman Lear did a lot of shows in the 70s, uh, Good Times, Maud, All in the Family is probably his most famous one. And all of those had serious elements in them, even though they were sitcoms. And that's what uh, John Amos expected for Good Times, which it was in the first couple of seasons. Then uh, Jimmy Walker took off as uh, um, JJ, and suddenly that's all the show became. And John Amos said, well, F that, I'm out of here. Kind of like Family Matters with Urkel. Yes, you know, that's actually a good example. Yeah. Okay. Although, although family members is never supposed to be taken seriously. I mean, there was that fantastic episode where the uh, um, the one daughter or niece goes up the stairs and is never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> God, that show. That's the way it works on TV. You either go upstairs, you're never seen again, or you go upstairs, you come back down like 10, 20 years, uh, sorry, like... 10 years older or something. That's, that's how they would do it on soap operas. You'd be like this 10-year-old uh, and go upstairs and come back down you're like at 20. You're never seen again like uh, the brother on... Um, Happy shit. Days. Happy Days, yes. Thank you. I, I was drawing a blank. Uh, I'm an old man. I know all the sitcoms. Hey, it's, you're going in your heart, right? Come on. How old are you, Joe? 50? 51? I'm 55. He's old oh. enough to know all of them, but young enough to remember all of them. <laughs> okay, so old timers hasn't set in yet. That's good. That's good. Did did your birds just laugh at my joke? <laughs> no, that's my chihuahua out in the hallway. Your chihuahua is laughing at my joke. It sounds like he wants outside, but yeah. Let me have my fan. How many pets do you have? All of them. <laughs> he has all the pets. We, yeah, we have uh, three cockatiels. One. Um, I forget the, the species of the bird. Um, Conure is the, the species. Um, then we have four chihuahuas. And I'm sure there's some fish in my daughter's room still, maybe. I don't know. They're not loud, don't worry. Um, the only other named character is King Zed, or the only person with a IMDb, IMDb uh, not IMDb, but Wikipedia page. King Zed played by Rod Loomis, who was Sigmund Freud in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Ah, oh, okay. Party time. Excellent. So, excellent. The first TED Talk. <laughs> um, there's some great uh, IMDb notes for this we can get into later on that, that, are, that just make it even more fantastic. But let's, uh, let's get into the actual movie. I, I did see uh, George post something about Battlestar Galactica and Star Wars or, and Beastmaster having a similar theme. Mm -hmm. I listened to it on YouTube and I'm like you know what? Yeah, I mean Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking note for note. Sounds like the same goddamn song. And it was written by different people. They, they're they both similar to Star Wars' theme if you if you listen to them. Maybe, maybe like the Imperial Walk. Maybe it's just having the horns play, you know? That's what my that girlfriend really connects said, and I'm calling bullshit. It's literally the same notes, or at least the same intervals, for like a good part of the main phrase. But yeah, yeah I forget. I'm pretty sure this, this came after Battlestar, so this would be plagiarizing that. Yeah, Battlestar was what, late 70s, and this was 82, so yep. good job, Beastmaster. <sighs> Uh, okay, in the uh, opening scene, we see Mayax and his priests going to the temple. Uh, he's got... I, I have them down as Butterface Witches. Butterface Witches? Yep. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, mean, I understand we're supposed to be surprised when we actually see their faces, but what the hell was the deal with them grinding up against that uh, thing they were looking into? Their, their water TV. The we got to see what was going on. Their cauldron. Yeah, around... The cauldron. I... They're like grinding up on that thing. They're really, like, dancing around it like it's their stripper pole or something. It's it's really yeah. weird when you look back at it, yeah. Yep. Uh, I, this I is have for children, this. for God's sake. This was. Mm -hmm. I don't think this was for children. You don't think no. so? Yeah. I, what adult was going to watch this? It might have been PG, but this part was, like, some of this is not for children. 
Definitely there's, not. There's two times where you see tits in this movie. It was not. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, absolutely that's, right. That's, that's the same good. scene. That's the same scene, but still gratuitous nonetheless. <laughs> no, 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 no. Two separate, two other times in the future where you see different sets of tits. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, one yeah which... There is, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. What were you gonna say? I just said one was where she's swimming, and the other is when they're being attacked. Another woman, you get to see her breast. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, both gratuitous. Well, both... tell Chuck, did you enjoy that? Did you achieve puberty when you saw those? Or I was five, so um, I'm gonna say uh, not me. It just went right past you. No. Or was it? Yeah. Did you watch it on TV, or did you go to the theater? Uh, I would have seen it on TV, probably TV. Oh, they just edited know, it out. Station. Yeah, then they edited it out. You you never didn't even get to see them. Well, I have I had seen it. The unedited, ed, unedited versions, you know, not for TV versions, so probably on like HBO or something, mm-hmm. you know. But then all, but every you time five, after then. that, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, it was only on TBS. <laughs> um, let's see the, I have them done as just scantily clad priestesses at a, at that point around a cauldron or scrying pool. <laughs> and the credits they're listed as which woman number one, number two, and three. So I guess oh. which woman is their title? Which which is which? <laughs> uh, the the first one tells Zed about the prophecy, and he denies it, saying the king's son is going to die tonight. The one who's prophesied to kill him, which we know, and you know later on is going to be Dar. Uh, the king and some soldiers enter the temple, along with Seth, who's played by John Amos. Is it Amos or Amos? Amos. 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 Yeah, all right. Uh, Zed confronts him about his pending sacrifice of an unborn, banishing Mayax as punishment. Mayax tells, Seth, Mayax tells Zed about the impending sacrifice of, of his son. And the king's like, yeah, I could have you arrested. Which, as the king... Which he just fucking should have done. He <laughs> should have had him yeah, beheaded he? right the fuck there. Why did he not do that? <laughs> because story. Because story. I know, because the movie would have come to a grinding halt right then. (laughs) Right. If we put any any logic at all into anything into this, it falls apart. For that matter, here's an idea. If you have these witches and they have all these powers, why don't you just make yourself king? What do you need all this other business to do? Right. Just say, hey, make me king. Have your witches turn into something and assassinate the king and and implant yourself as king. Done. End of movie. No need to kill the kid. No need to do any of this. Um, I like how the... Or make uh, the kid your son. Or, yeah, we're making your son, yeah. Um, he asks, gives this nod to one of the priests, and he uh, commits suicide via ceiling hook, and think just offs himself right then and there. Now, why did they do that? It, it's a show of power. It's a, hey, see what I can do? I can make these guys kill themselves with a nod of my head. That's all. Yeah. Ah, and yet he doesn't have the king do that. Well, no, it's well, not he, that he's mind controlling them. He's got them like brainwashed. Yeah, oh, they're just so cult they're just followers. Like, yeah. yeah. I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, that night, the witch num- woman number one, I assume it's number one, comes to the king and queen's bedroom, pours some glowing liquid on both of them, which stops them from moving. Some magic happens, and the baby is transferred into a cow. And I guess the mom dies then and there, while the king just watches helplessly. Yeah, and there's, the witch there's woman no leaves with the cow. That, yeah, there's no way that the biology at work there is going to allow them, the human mother, to survive the embryo child being sucked out of her womb magically and planted into another animal. Like, there's just a giant abscess in the middle of the mother right now. Yeah. Also, here's an idea. Not to be too uh, <laughs> downer, but stillbirth is a thing. Why Why have the kid be born at all? If you're already there, just don't have the kid born. Yeah, yeah. if you're already there, just stabby, stabby, we're done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or just like have the kid just not be born and in the stomach. Red, or, or just reverse the whole red thing. Red wedding, that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Next, next scene, the uh, witch woman number one cuts open the cow, removes the baby, and prepares the sacrifice after branding his hand. Why the brand? For what? Uh, I, I I don't know. To mark him as the one that's special, hey, I guess. Don't, don't try and ask why of anything that any magic user in any fucking universe ever does, because the why <laughs> is because the magic demands that it be done this very specific way. 
the kid has to die, but let me brand him so everyone will know this is the child that who's, who no one's supposed to see. I got him. I got him. This is him right here. Right here. Right here. I guess that's why. I don't know. Um, what? The brand stays small even when he becomes, you know, an Jeez, adult. Don't, don't, think, don't <laughs> think too hard. Just keep going or this will never end. Well, they, they, they kind of fixed this in Beast Master 2. Okay? Where it's find out, spoiler, that he has a brother with the same brand that covers up their entire palm. So... Yes. That, How did the mother have another child? I I don't know. I don't. I, may, I don't know, man. I it's, look, it's an older sibling. Let's not go into this. We don't. We're not here for Beastmaster two. <laughs> next. Week. I'm barely here for Beastmaster. Next week. Next week. Beastmaster two. I don't think you could pay Joe to watch. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Then the farmer, and that's all I'm going to call him because he never ever gets a name. The farmer sees her and intervenes, saving the baby and taking him to his village of Emor, and just kind of proclaiming, hey, I've got a kid! Woo! <laughs> Which, look, <laughs> he saved a child from somebody that had just branded his fucking hand and was lifting a knife ready to stab him. As far as characters in movies go, he's alright. Yeah, he, right. he, right. he, he saved a kid from what conservatives think liberals do. Oh my Although it is still strange. I mean, I guess it's not the modern era. I mean, I guess adoption wasn't a thing back then, or whenever this era is supposed to have happened. But uh guy shows up with a child yeah. <laughs> that's not his. Someone should be asking questions, but apparently nobody's oh, he's just he's a father now, hey, apparently. Hey Bob, where'd you get that kid? Don't ask. Fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess uh, it's good to see that he does raise a kid. He doesn't try and find a wife <laughs> so help him raise a child. He's, he's going to be a single father. Yeah, not wrong with so... single fathers. Just because you didn't yeah. have one, Joe. <laughs> I'm not saying anything wrong with single fathers. I'm simply saying it's funny. It never occurs to him. Eh, maybe I should have a wife or something. No, just as one kid. That's fine. Well, and apparently there are no okay. other children than he fathers. Joe, he lived in a small <laughs> village, right? Every woman in that village knew that he was there, knew he had a child, and knew he was available. And none of them stepped up either. <laughs> well, look at him. That just brings up another question. What's wrong with this guy? Then none of the women are like, hey, I'll be your wife now. I'll take care of your kid. He Is picks that... up kids from the ground. Maybe they this don't want just... that. This one was just sitting outside. Look what I found. Rub the dirt off of it. It's fine. By the way, speaking of that village, I don't know, maybe you're going to get into this, but I really need to know. Why is the housing on stilts? Yep, I have that a question I've got, too. Yep. It's never explained. It's just on stilts for some reason. Yeah, they, they're There's stilt no houses. There's to be on stilts. They're stilt, explodey houses nowhere near water. Why does this place explode? Let's, <laughs> let, let's, let, let, let's check get us there. <laughs> <laughs> just said so you say, like, what? All right, sorry, yes. Uh... My, my next note is the six-month-old newborn, because there's no way that's a newborn baby. Correct. <laughs> yeah, that's a really big kid. <laughs> uh, then we cut to, I guess, 12 years later, because he's Jesus. Um, farmer's <laughs> training Dar. Uh, he, hits a, he almost hits another farmer with his caber, which I can only find a description online as like a, a boomerang with four axe blades, but that but is not a boomerang. Weapon. It doesn't yeah, come back boomerang. to it's more like yeah. a, a hinged throwing star of sorts. Yeah, more like a glaive, kind of like blade, but it would not come back to you. Although, no I, will give it, come back to you. I will give it this. It is an interesting looking fantasy weapon. Yeah, the weapons in this are amazing looking. You know, his sword and, and later on is fucking awesome. I love it. That's, that's probably always been my favorite part of this movie is the sword. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my next note is... Honey, what did you like about this movie? I like the swords, Mommy! <laughs> Let me see some movie about swords! Five. What do you want from me? <laughs> Meanwhile, in Joe Land, I like the tits! <laughs> Not at five! Well, then there's when you're 15 and you're watching it again, you know? <laughs> I, I, was, I was much more into hardcore stuff by 15. I mean, come on. I was into whatever I found in the woods. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I used to find porn in like abandoned buildings, and like it was always like the weirdest, awful stuff, like leather where it was all wrapped up. I'm like, what? Is, what is this? I can't do anything with this. <laughs> Didn't do anything for me. 
or my friends. You don't look at me like these dirty magazine. It was like this woman. You see a body. She's like you see a breast and everything. But then she's like leathers wrapped everywhere. Like what is? Why are we seeing this? I don't, I don't get the leather. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I I don't get the leather. Um, yeah, I, if I'm having sex, I don't want to wear anything. And, and we this talk about the leather later on why with the uh, um, pajamas. <laughs> so. Hey, I, I like all this vamping stuff. We don't need to script. Screw the script. This is my show, all right? <laughs> um, he said he wanted the long version. I'm giving it to him, okay? Yes. Give him the long version. That's hey, not, great. You guys get to just lay off your headphones when we're done. You don't have to edit anything. All right? This is all that's on true. me. That is true. God, that's a weird feeling. Yeah, I thought it would be, you know, kind of... Uh, relaxing for you for a little bit at least you know take it easy not no one's gonna roast this no one's gonna listen to this so don't worry about it no illusions is not gonna roast this podcast i paid for no illusions to roast my podcast <laughs> and i was Later. very happy with the result and the resulting bump in downloads which yeah i thought about that too immediately i was like ah, oh, they're gonna get more more downloads good for them good job george because uh, the citation needed listeners and the Piat listeners, while there is much overlap in the Venn diagrams, it is not a unity circle. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, my next note is, does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> because uh, Dar senses an animal past the tree line, and we see the tree line moving too, like it's... Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that any, movie? Is there any movie with something hiding in the bushes? Yeah. Tra Jurassic Park is what you're thinking of, though. Yeah, maybe Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Russian bear per IMDb. I thought it was a grizzly, but it's a Russian bear. Uh, a bear attacks the other farmer and pulls him into the woods, yanking him out of sight. I don't know if that's how bears attack people, but that doesn't seem like it's how that happens. No, and what they don't do next is throw them back out of the woods. <laughs> right, he, he tosses them back out of the woods, and that's, that's still amazing. And he comes, uh, the, bear, the bear comes out of the woods with blood all over its snout, and then the next time you see it, it doesn't have blood all over its snout. Yeah. In, in like half the shots, the bear has blood on his face, and the other half, in the same edit, no blood. I'm like, looking back, and like, that's that's lazy. Who didn't let that go? But, all right. Do you, do you know the story behind the bear? Yeah, I do in the, in the notes for my NDB that, uh, um, Let's see, the bear attacked the, uh, the trainer. Trainer. <laughs> and they yeah. had to clear out the entire area that, that, that morning. And then uh, I guess somebody looked at uh, Mark Singer and was like, we're ready for your scene now. Just, yeah, uh, that just happened and we're ready to go. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, oh, if we, we do get a name for the guy that was put in the woods. His name is Tease. But mm -hmm. the farmer dad still has no name. Has no name and killed Tease with his fucking prank of throwing his thing at him and sticking it to that tree. Right. Because if he hadn't done that, he might have been paying attention to the woods behind him and maybe heard a loud crunching or thumping sound in the woods. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, I hadn't thought of that. True. This is why uh, I'm not a fan of practical jokes. <laughs> um, I got some notes about the bear not even. Not even Timmy looks scary when he's walking on his hind legs. His mouth's not even open. He's not growling. That's all just ADR. <laughs> no, it's just Yogi walking through the fucking woods. Uh, Dar uses... after, after, they, after they attacked the trainer, they probably drugged him like crazy. <laughs> that bear, Bear's probably that bear was That's stoned. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. We didn't know where he that was. That was the happiest bear in a 10-mile radius. <laughs> We still got to get that shot, guys. Ah, oh, shit. Get him out there. Uh, Dar uses his mind powers and gets the bear on, to walk on all fours and walk away. Uh, Dar's, Dar's father apparently fell and broke his ankle somehow and told him tells him to hide his powers from his villagers because they'll be afraid of him. Just like the X-Men. Why would they be afraid? Yes, why would they... Why would he feel the need to tell him not to... Why would... What, from one, why would he think they'd be afraid? They live in this magical prime where there's witches. If anything, here's a guy to talk to animals. That might be useful to you. Yeah, that could be to the village. At the same time, none of those villagers had those magic powers, and therefore, 
if you live in that village and have them, you're going to get, like, burned. Because that's, or would you? that's I mean, how rural, rural folks treat anything that they don't understand. Listen, these people live on stilts. They're very advanced. You don't know <laughs> how they would have reacted. It's unfair to judge, prejudge them like they're that. They're elevated. I wouldn't say they're advanced. They know a reason for those stilts that we might not understand. It's well beyond our reasoning. That's all we need to know, all right, about the stilts. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> um, yeah, they might have just burned him alive for being a witch, you know? Who knows? Well, just talking animals is not very witchy. I mean, talk to Dr. Doolittle. They didn't burn him alive. Oh, but Dr. Doolittle's crazy, though. What are you talking about? Come on. Wait, are we talking about talk the animals? Well, actually, I'm talking about Rex Harrison, but we could do Eddie Murphy as well. Let's not. Talk to the animals, learn their languages, da 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 If you talk to the animals, sing with the animals, think and drink and meet with the animals, then they can talk to me. Dun, 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 dun. That's the song. See, Joe doesn't usually start singing until I get up to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to let him go. If you want to... Mm -hmm. You want to sing, do whatever, go ahead. Nope. This is all just content. <laughs> all right, so next scene, right? Luke Skywalker yeah, yeah. is fucking around with his friends at Tashi Station. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we flash, flash forward like another six years, I guess, and uh, they're living in the same village. He goes off to do farming with the young ones. And uh, out in the distance, we see the Jun Horde appear with Mayax in tow. And uh, they attack the village while the young ones are working in the field. The villagers grab whatever weapons they have, and Dar's father pulls out Dar's sword, which is which was only made for this movie. It's not a real type of sword at all. It's a mix between a katana and a scimitar. Which or a I, katana I that got bent. Eh, maybe. I could see that too. But I like the Juns as a nice, uncomplicated villain. Yeah, they're just. Who do we kill? Them? Whoever. They kill Ooh. whoever they need to. Yep. And the leader wears a Lego helmet. Yeah. Lots of leather, Joe. Mm -hmm. Lots of leather. Yep. It would have been great in porno. <laughs> which maybe they were, for all I know. It was uh, early 80s. <laughs> Some guy walking past their set. Hey, what are you guys doing this afternoon? We need villains for our movie. Um, you guys okay with that? Yeah. I, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, everyone is half naked in this picture, practically. Yeah. Um, let's see. So Dar's father immediately gets knocked down by the first horse that runs in. Yes. Because he's he still at the entrance of the moron. Stands at the entrance in front of everybody else with his sword against charging cavalry. Yeah. Not the brightest <laughs> well, move. Now, now, to be fair, he drew a line in the sand yes, he first. Did. He, he did. So he did. They, they knew not to cross that. That was his line, and he was like, no, 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 no fuck. Oh, shit. That was my line. And then he got treated um, like the uh, the cabaret singer in Fisher King. Just trampled. I haven't seen that, I'm sorry. Bleeding in horse shit. Sorry. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um, let's see, some details. You should see Fisher King, because you, you will get to see Robin Williams' uh, genitalia, if you're curious. Ooh, Robin Williams' balls, nice. Mm -hmm. That's, uh... Balls and cock! Oh, oof. Are they hitting <laughs> like his arms? That's my question. My only question. There, oh, he's a hairy man. He has hair everywhere, exactly as you would think. <laughs> Jesus. Him and yeah. Elliot Gould. <laughs> Him and Elliot Gould. Yeah, they should have a, should have had a contest. Mm -hmm. I bet if they like stood back to back, they'd stick to each other like Velcro. <laughs> Playgirl really missed out. They should have had a Robin Williams <laughs> and and uh, uh, Elliot Gould issue. <sighs> Who's hairier? Instead, they went with Shawn Michaels. You know, they, they really passed up. They really missed out on an opportunity there. Totally. <laughs> uh, so, some notes on the John attack. Uh, they torched some of the straw houses for whatever reason. Uh, it, it nearly tears off the woman's shirt. And yep. for the only reason that we know of. Uh, some of the houses topple down, of course, because they're on stilts. The villagers fight back, but of course it's just a rout. They're just decimated. And some of the, oh wait, and also it also has them to the houses. They, ex they do they what? explode like Star Trek control consoles. Why? Yeah. <laughs> what is in those houses that they explode? Were they storing? Were they making meth? Is that why they were so up high? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Let's see, after after that's all over, Darth gets there, finds his dad's sword, uh, heads for the leader, but gets knocked out and pulled to safety by his dog, Kodo, who gets an uh, arrow to the side for his trouble. To be clear, the <laughs> dog gets a name the dad doesn't. <laughs> it's got a lot of fond memories of that dog. That dog says real strength there, commands to pull this grown man out of the way of uh, danger. He was a really, Here's my question. really good boy. <laughs> Here's my question, though. If Dar can talk to animals, why does he not talk to the horses? At no point in this movie does he ever actually talk to the horses. Yeah, you could do that on the down low. You don't have to let the villagers know of your powers. You could just talk to the he, horses. They're what attacking the them. Maybe he was trying and the horses were like, no, dude, fuck you. This guy feeds me. <laughs> oh, that's, I have another, that uh, brings up another question I have out, uh, but uh, we can bring that oh, up. Go okay. ahead, go ahead. But go I ahead. do wonder, what no, is no, he no, feeding them? Let him bring them? it up later. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the next morning, I guess, Dara wakes up and he can now see through the, through the eyes of the Golden Eagle, which he will name Sharak, or his screeching sound for the bird. Mm -hmm. uh, he sees the Kodo is dead because he took the arrow to the side. Good boy, but is still breathing. If you noticed in that scene, the dog I did is not still notice, breathing. But it's nice to know that the dog I didn't did notice not either, But that's—he's a terrible actor. The dog does a <laughs> great performance, better than most of the humans in this picture. Um, see, Dar, Dar goes to the village. He sees the eagle. I uh, surveys the the damage and then gathers all the bodies into a circle and places his dog into his father's arms. And if you look at all the the villagers. None of them are burnt. The junk burnt the village. None of these bodies are burnt. Yeah, I, I have no explanation for this. What? <laughs> got, I do. Bad script. Bad script. directing. Yes. Bad work. That's my explanation. Also cheaping out on makeup. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, can we afford this? No. Oh, well, all right, fine. Can we afford for the extras to rub dirt on their faces? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They are not all smudgy. This is not a 1930s movie. No smudge. Uh, I'm hear Dar's father's voice, which I think this little monologue was misplaced. Like it should have been earlier in the movie. Like, yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't be hearing this as a memory. We should have seen this being told to him. Yeah, this could have been they're sitting down by a lake or something. When he says the gods have put their mark on you, and someday you'll know why. Till then, the mark will be your guide. My sword, my cable will be your companions. Emor, trust, protect Emor, your home. And if anything should happen to me, look for our enemies, the Juns. And you may search for your destiny in the Valley of Arak. He assumes that the Juns are going to kill him. Yeah, what happened if their <laughs> exploding houses exploded while he was out hunting something? And he comes back to his village burning, goes and hunts down the fucking Juns, but somebody, like, fell asleep with a cigarette. What I want to, I mean, look, he, he tells his son what he thinks his son needs to know, except one very important thing he forgets to tell his son. Consent! He forgets <laughs> to tell him about the idea of consent. <laughs> we'll get there, yeah. Oh, jumping the gun, jumping the gun, but it's, yes, yes. Everyone, if you have a son, teach them of consent. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. That shouldn't, that, should, that should not be a message we have to put out there. But it is. And yet, and yet sadly, we do. We do. Yeah. How did you react to that when you were five? You think, wow, that's really... <laughs> that's cool. I should try yet, that. Joe. <laughs> years, man, it was a different time. Let's ask about the 70s, Joe. How was the, how was the 70s? Were they any better, Joe? No. <laughs> Probably worse, actually. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, to jump that, on that. Before we get to that, we have to get to Dar, who has no support system right now, running up a mountain and swinging a goddamn log around for no fucking reason. <laughs> he's practicing. Practicing and what? He's in shape. He's the already in shape. I don't know. The village is apparently in the desert, or like the edge of the desert, and suddenly he's in a forest with a river. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't have where they, re, you know, film this, but that does not make sense. Damn it, there it is. Um, the village on fire. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, then he's in his... Leather loincloth, and he's off to the road and adventure. We get a montage of him and the bird. Uh, then uh, he gets robbed by the ferrets that he'll eventually name Kodo and Poto and falls into quicksand. 
which I don't know how quicksand works, but that just scares me of quicksand. Yeah, like, it, it, Joe, this might be true of you, too. Did the movies of your youth also imbue in you a sense that there was a way higher chance of dying in quicksand than there actually was? Older movies did. Not so much my childhood, but in the childhoods of, I guess, my mother and my grandmother. Yes. If you look at old films of the 30s and 40s, a lot of quicksand. And probably maybe early 70s, I guess. But yeah, eventually they stopped doing that. But yeah, the quicksand was always like, oh, anytime you're walking out in the forest or something or some desert, you're going to fall into quicksand. Yeah, I always thought if I was going to walk you know, too far from my house to a, 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 a plot of land that was just too dry... I was going to immediately find quicksand and just fall in and die. <laughs> so, um, by the way, this was filmed in California and Nevada. Oh. Like Valley of Fire State Park, Malibu Creek State Park uh, in Nevada, and Lake Pyramid and Simi Valley in California. Okay, thanks. Yep. Are, are, any, are any of those known for their quicksand? Known for quicksand, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure quicksand doesn't actually exist. Oh, all right. What is quicksand? Quicksand would be like sand and water in a ratio that is more liquidy than sand than solid, but it it wouldn't stay that way. <laughs> and it wouldn't really suck you down. I mean, I guess it depends how deep it is, but you could actually just walk out of it. Yeah, it probably depends on the movie too. Um, let's see. We get to uh, the Jones are trying to capture a black tiger. Dar sees through his eyes and kills the Jones, or I'll I'll say her eyes. Let's go, let's go with her eyes. All right, since we got to the tiger, I have got since, to ask this. Since he's got ferrets. Since we, ha since got, we have uh, the... No, we don't have the ferrets yet, but we... Oh, actually, sorry. Yeah, we no, do we, have do have the, we do have the ferrets. We do have the ferrets. But we have a tiger yeah. in blackface. Yes. Yes, we have a tiger in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the... He's got his, uh, his bird friend. What I want to know is, what is he feeding these things? <laughs> what is he feeding them? He doesn't eat. They never eat. Now, that tiger would eat one of those animals, I'm telling you. Why the tiger him? eats whoever the fuck he has to kill. Like, you can say he takes a couple of bites of every guard and priest that he has to kill, and he's fine. <laughs> but in the meantime, there weren't any guards or priests to, uh, what is he eating until then. It just it seemed weird to me. Also, you know what happens to that tiger? Does it say in IMDb? That uh, they, wanted a black, they wanted it to be black, so they dyed it with hair dye, like... I guess every other day or whatever, and it would bleed through sometimes, and that, that's why you see the orange and black stripes at some point in the movie. And every time it had right. to drink, it would remove some of the dye, yes. and that's why the face is cleaner. Yeah. But do you know what the dye did to the animal? No, what did it do to the animal? I didn't Give see it that. cancer, Joe. Kill him. Kill him. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. It's like the Tin Man all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is like the Tin Man, exactly. <laughs> all that... Uh... All that dye will kill you. It also didn't do well for the uh, Wicked Witch either. Stuff makes you sick. Make up yourself too much. It's a commercial. That... Especially when you're a tiger. It's a commercial of the guy at the uh, ER and he's like, I use the wrong paint. And he's painting, you know, like a Bengals fan. Sorry. Who day? Um, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, no sports? Is that your commentary, George? Is that, is that no sports, guys? No, no sports? Okay. No sports, sorry. No sports, man. Uh, so, they kill the Jones. He screeches to the bird for some help during the fight, which I love his screech, which I am not going to do. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, Why do these animals care? Why do they help him? Why do they give a damn? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, he's supposed to be able to talk to them, not he's like the mentally master, control them. Joe, it's the title. <laughs> Like, so you could talk to me. What? I, that's always drove me crazy in all these stories about, like, the guy could, like, Tarzan or Aquaman. They control these fish. Why would the animals care? You're a different species entirely. Why would they give a damn what you want? Like, oh, we have to listen to you because you didn't talk to us? So you talk to us. It doesn't mean I'm going to do what you say. I talk to you, George. You don't do what I tell you to do. And then they just be like, oh, you want me to help you? Feed me. Yes, Bring exactly. Let's go back to the food again. So, all right. Yeah. Can, can what we is... sidestep this by saying, yes, that is the dynamic they have and that he feeds them and we just don't fucking see it happening? Because <laughs> if, we had, if we had to watch him feed two ferrets, an eagle, and a tiger every time they needed to eat, that's all we would watch for two hours. <laughs> Joe, I, I get the feeling you're really annoyed by you know, just trying to put some logic in everything. <laughs> well, I'm 
was just annoyed by the movie in general, but that's just one of the many things I didn't like. Let's see. Oh, the next scene, so we can get past them having the tiger and naming her Ru. Ru. Which, Ru. Yeah. It would have been hilarious. I mean, obviously, but, hey, it's a fantasy movie. Why not? It would have been great if one of the animals turned up and said, that's not my name. My name's Chuck. What are you talking about? <laughs> or Bill or Sally or something. Like, how dare you? Then you we, we've been alive for a long time. You come along and just decide you got to name us. We already have names. Screw you, by buddy. The way, Who the hell are you? By the way, those two ferrets was actually 12 ferrets. Yeah. That's right. They have to use different ferrets because ferrets are very hard to train. They're impossible to train because they yeah. don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, of course not. I think they actually went through a couple of ferrets dying too, maybe. Uh, uh, Almost certainly. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. By tiger. By tiger. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing one, guys. Let me see the tail. Ah, oh, shit. Not again. <laughs> Um, let's just be real, the next scene is, uh, a lot different watching it as an adult than you might have as a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, I'll just, I'll say our group. A group encounters two young women, a blonde and a redhead, bathing topless in the river, which at five, I thought they were just bathing, thought nothing of it. Watching later on, this is just a reason to see their tits. Let's just <laughs> be clear there. So, oh, my question is... Actually, no, never mind. I know the answer to this. Well, what is, what was the, be the question, question was, why would they let two slave girls wander away outside of screaming distance when they are, like, being kept for reasons to go bathe and frolic in a fucking lake? But the answer is what she tells Dar later, that they'd kill her family if she didn't go back, so. Yeah. and Also because the script says yeah. so. <laughs> and also movie. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, Dar watches them from behind some branches like a creep. Yeah, that's what my note is. Creep. I creep too. We we bingo. We all got creep. Koto and Poto steal some clothes that were laying on the ground as Dar watches and laughs. Uh, then Kiri runs after them because they're obviously her clothes. Or sorry, the redhead, Tanya Roberts. But she still and... has like she still has a top to pull up, so what the fuck yeah. did they yeah. take? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Maybe a, a blanket, a robe, I don't know. It's never clear. Uh, Rue runs towards her, and we get some fake growls from the tiger, the, whose mouth is not even open. I just keep seeing that, and I keep just thinking, that tiger's not even talking. It's not even doing anything. You suck as a trainer. <laughs> Dar scares away Rue and steals a kiss, because... consent. So let's let's be clear here. He, he tells Rue to go away, and then sexually assaults the girl. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, let's be real there. That's 100% what happens. I saved your life. Now, pay me with a kiss. <laughs> well, it's uh, now pay me by letting me put my penis in you, but we'll start with a kiss. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess. And now, all that stuff about revenge goes right out of his head. He just wants his dick wet. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's a uh, lake right there. He can go jump in that. And... <laughs> Not that sort of wet, oh. George. It's probably cold. It'll probably take that away. But <laughs> she sweeps the leg and... Then we get Dar's backstory told again, and uh, eventually we get her backstory when he uh, reverses and he's on top of her, holding her down to the ground in a very almost rapey scene. Oh my god, it comes across so even more creepy than the goddamn kiss. Like, oh my god, what's, what's happening what's right now? This is not a totally rapey scene, is because his legs are on the outside. Right. We see her whip scars and get some bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she turns over and he's like, they, they whip you like a beast. I'm a slave. What would you have me do? That is... Well, I could think of three <laughs> things right now that I would have you do. <laughs> Run the fuck. By the way, for, by the way, for a slave, she has an excellent hairdresser. Whoever's doing her hair, great job. Is she wearing makeup? Am I wrong about you that? Is she wearing wrong, makeup? Joe. You're not wrong. She is wearing blue eyeshadow. From her, we get the obligatory... Don't follow me. I forget we haven't met. Send off. Of course, uh, Carrie then leaves her friend behind. The blonde who's... Yeah, well, we never see that girl at all again. Uh, well, no, we that... do see her again later yeah, on. Yeah, we do see her. Do we? Okay, yeah, I but, forgot. But she just leaves her right, right here. Leaves her with the guy who almost took advantage of her. But mm. whatever. Of course, Dar, Dar follows her. Uh, then we come to the next scene, which is... I'm just calling these guys the bat, bat winged bird monster humanoids because we never get a, an idea of what these things are. But I would love them. 
Yeah, which is okay. Like, it's okay that we meet these things and we don't have a backstory for them. Like, yeah. how do these things forge things? Like, they have a metal eagle statue and they have a metal medallion. Where the fuck did they make those? They don't even look like they have thumbs. They just have, yeah. like, hook claws. Yeah. Also, when you first get there, do you not... I mean, maybe it's just me. When I see the uh, their, their little spurred statue, I think, wait a minute, is that, like, a Nazi st <laughs> symbol? Almost. Does that bird look like a little Nazi-ist? A bit of Nazi, you know what I'm saying? It's I did not see that, but... <laughs> you did not no, see... No, take a look, that? take a look. It was a look Nazi a, joke, Joe. Nazi joke, I get it, yes. <laughs> take a, like a Nazi symbol and they're birds. It like, looks like the same thing. Which, maybe that's the only way you can do it, I don't know. But it looks, that's what it looked like to me. Uh, yeah, we got the uh, obligatory head in their cauldron, which... Why are they cooking stuff? I mean, do they need stuff to be cooked? They don't seem like no! they need stuff to be cooked. That's right. I do. I do love how they melt people with their wings, but you know we see that later. That's probably the coolest special effect in this movie. Well, not very much later, because he finds the head in the friggin' pot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The and guy. He, and then, oh my God, they're surrounded by the friggin' bat things from that one planet in uh, Titan AE, and <laughs> neither of you saw it. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Sorry. Didn't they let him out? They let out. He lets out this poor guy who's captured somehow. How do those I don't know how things they tie him. the knots in that cage? <laughs> who knows? Why do they need to tie him in a cage? What I want to know is you let him out of the cage and you do nothing to help him. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, sir. Poor guy gets eaten. Why was he there? Oh, very libertarian of Darth. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, you're free now. Out. Oh, yeah, you're free way. now. Oh, Go get eaten. Shit, not that way. Oh, fuck. I totally ate him. Oh well, not Maybe my problem. Maybe they need the stew so that they can all eat off of one body. Because I think if they're eating it live, it's just one body and one meal. <laughs> Damn it, Sammy! We're going to save that. How, who stirs that thing? You remember? There's also a st who's stirring that thing. Oh, maybe they can Good use their question, two though. claws together. <laughs> and then we see that Dar is okay because Sherlock swoops down and. Onto his you know, outstretched arm. Ooh, so he's Where is your bird. god now? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, oh, you're friends of the bird. I guess we're going to have to let you go for some reason. <gasps> he likes birds. Birds like him. Uh, so now, they, uh, I guess their leader, maybe, gives him a token of their friendship. Again, where did that medallion come from? Where is their foundry that they melted the steel in, or the, <laughs> the brand, bronze in? And where is their mining equipment that they use to extract the... Again, can't can't think too much about it. Who's making the shit? <laughs> I just have a currency. What's going on here? Yeah, what the hell's going on here? I just want us all to remember, he meets these bird people. For what? Five minutes? Maybe less? <laughs> and then he leaves. That is his only relationship with these people. It's well, no, but that... the bird comes down and they see that the bird comes down. So now they are, oh, we're on his side because bird. <laughs> yeah. The bird is cool. I don't know. Cool. No, you don't know if that makes sense, but that's what happens, Joe. That's the <laughs> explanation, and that's all the explanation you're getting. It's enough to establish that they're going to be his friends later on in the movie. Yeah, which again, like, why would they care what happens to him? They know for like three seconds, well, even if they, they are do friends. They get with a bird. benefit out of it later, but we'll get there. They right. do, really. Well, yeah, they get a snack. More like thanks. Couple of snacks. It's kind of like Thanksgiving for them, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we get to Arak. Uh, the town that is really just a shitty model. Am I right? Yeah. That is so, it is so funny when he stands, he's supposed to be up on a mountain, and it's like, it's clearly a model! You can tell somebody this is such a shitty job. Why don't you just have him look down and then cut to the model? Don't have him standing there looking down. Like, it's, you can, it's, it's a shitty, you can tell! It's a shitty model on some shitty green screen. You know, early 80s green screen, whatever it was. To be fair, we are watching this on, like, HD screens, so the shittiness of it is way more apparent to us than it was to any of us watching it on, like, the CRT TV in our grandmother's basement. Perhaps. Fine. If you want to be nice to it. <laughs> and the road to Arak is lined with skeletons on these flimsy-ass poles. They're doing some bootleg Vlad the Impaler thing here. Um... He tells, the, he tells Ruth to, say, to stay hidden. Like, where the fuck? It's a desert. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. nothing around there. I'm black. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to hide in? <laughs> and with all my pets. No, the yeah. tiger. He tells the tiger to stay hidden. Oh, no, I'm a hey, black right. tiger, tiger on gray ground. 
What the fuck do you You're want? You're right. From I'm me? sorry. Yes. Roar. <laughs> Roo. Max is uh, sacrificing kids at the temple, like you do. His minions grab a kid from the crowd and put a knife to the dad's throat. He a tosses kid that was, kid in. A kid who was already dressed to be sacrificed. Right. None of the other kids in the crowd were wearing what that kid was, and later on, we'll see all of the sacrifices wearing what that kid's wearing. Right. If you don't want your kid sacrificed, don't dress him as the sacrifice and then bring him to the sacrifice. <laughs> well, I guess we gotta dress Timmy in this. I mean, Mayak said to, so it's fine, right? He'll be fine. <laughs> and again, this is what Republicans think liberals do. <laughs> this is what we do on the weekends, George. Don't let them know. Uh, so the kid, the kid gets tossed in. Shirok swoops down, grabs him with her talons, and flies off. Fantasy physics. Fantasy physics, yes. <laughs> that kid. Are you suggesting a bird can't carry a small child? Yes, I am. I am suggesting that, that in this world, <laughs> no. How big would that bird have to be to fly off with a forty-pound kid? Like Mario Brothers rock size. Right. <laughs> uh, the crowd is stunned. And they all bow except for Mayax and Dar, who just stare at each other. Mm. Mm. Here's an idea. Since you know Max is the bad guy just from that very moment, why not have the bird knock him into... I mean, if the bird can lift up a child, why can't it bring a rock and just knock it on his head and knock him into the fire? In the movie! Have the bird save the kid, and Roo climbs up the, the uh, temple from behind him and pushes his ass in. There we go. We're done. Yeah, we're done. Uh, that night, Dar brings the girl to the safety to the safest place possible, her oh, home boy. in the middle of the child sacrifice city. <laughs> <laughs> no one will notice. Hey, wasn't that kid supposed to be sacrificed before? <laughs> well, then we'll just sacrifice him again. That's all. Yeah, yeah why bring him oh, back? Oh, no, 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 that no, most no. important thing here, right? When uh, the bird snatches the kid, Mayox spins it, right? Like, see, yeah. R wants your children. Yes, the same right. way that you know, fucking QAnon spins everything to be a <laughs> thing pro QAnon. Yeah. Oh no, that's what was supposed to happen. That right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I must say that was probably the most clever part of the f line in the film. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, we were supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that actually makes I sense. I meant to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we get more exposition from her dad. So Mayax, the Johns. The king's living son, the slave girls, everything. Everything we needed to know. We're all caught up. Uh, the next couple of scenes, again, seem like they're out of order. Like they should have come before he got to Arak. When he meets uh, Seth and Tal in the woods. Well, before um, he meets Seth and Tal in the woods, he stops to get a drink. And two of Malox's, Malox's because I keep thinking his name is Malox, like the fucking antacid. <laughs> yes, that's what I keep Mayax. thinking as well. Mayax. So yeah. two of Mayax priests come and, like, try and string him up with a pole, right? And one right. of them is wearing this ring with an eye on it that can see everything that's happening. And Mayox is just like, kill him! Kill him now! That's kill him! him. Kill yeah. him now! Kill him! <laughs> kill him now! With those fucking weird Klingon eyebrows. And... The, the tiger sneaks up and takes one out, and they take them both out. But as the guy with the ring is, like, dying, his hand comes up through the cauldron. And I actually thought that was a really, like, neat little fucking visual right there. Like, ha, okay, it's magic, so fuck, why not? So why yeah, not? Yeah. Uh, Although, again, he has all these magic people. They're seeing all this happen. Why not use a magic to get rid of Dar? Why just have this crude, let's just hang him thing? Or, why not use more than two fucking priests? It's not like you're not the ruling power. Your guys are not illegal to be anywhere. They can go anywhere yeah. and do anything under your fucking authority. So send all of them to where you know this guy is. You have an entire cult. Or at cult. least make the tiger disappear. Yeah. You have an entire cult. Send them all. All of them. At him. Right now. Go. Do mm -hmm. it. You, you, what you could do is, like, have the tiger go, like, uh, report the tiger to the NAACP for wearing blackface, <laughs> and then your problems are solved. Yeah. The Temple of R is now a SPLC-listed hate group. <laughs> Led by Ken Ham. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Rue chases, after all that, Rue chases a priest and falls into a trap in the ground, which, how they long had, did it take they to had, dig a hole like that? Yeah, it's like a seven-foot fucking hole. And they didn't think to put spikes at the bottom? That's <laughs> just poor planning. Mm -hmm. 
And again, here's another opportunity for him to talk to horses, and he doesn't do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he doesn't. Dar, I mean. So then... Uh, Some beast I master! Guess, what? Master Maybe of the beast! Maybe horses are just dumb. Maybe. Or smart! Or don't give a shit. What... Yeah, why should, I mean, maybe they're like, hey, why should we follow this guy around? These people actually feed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we give us a nice warm home. They're not demanding. They just ride us a couple of times. That's fine. We'll take it. We see, it, we see him use his powers, and the horses are just like, nah, son. Oh, then, uh, well, the tiger falls into the hole, and then uh, John Amos shows yeah. up, and they move a log. For John Amos yeah, John and Amos the, shows up. the big black grown man and the little white boy with a very close relationship show up. <laughs> This is the second time we have grown men with little boys have close relationships. There's something wrong here, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. Seth uh, fights the priest and that was uh, that trapped Rue and pushes him into the pit, which I found very nice. I like when that happens. Yeah, and that priest <laughs> looked like an angry kind of Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> Joey from Friends, Joe. Yeah. yeah okay. I, 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 I know Friends. He, he was also on like two episodes of Married with Children. Uh, let's, never mind. Whatever. How you doing? I'm married with children too. <laughs> love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. Esculos Golden Tree. Oh, what? We get uh, <laughs> Seth and Dar talking for a little while by campfire, which it was just daytime, so you know they waited for a long time to hang out to have that conversation. <laughs> to have that just conversation. Weird silence because yeah. they do the arm thing, right? Like. Travel together, strength in numbers, teamwork makes the dream work. And they all put their arms together, even the kid. And then it's nighttime and they're ta having the conversation that they should have had right after that. So yeah. they did the hand thing and we're like, okay, we'll go make a fire. All right. And then they sat around the fire until the fucking sun went down and then had that conversation. You little boy, go grab, go grab, go gather some wood. We're going to talk, talk things out over here in four hours. And while the little kid is grabbing wood, he also grabs that fucking spy ring because I guess it was shiny and looked nice. Yeah, which I I always liked the ring. That always looked cool. That always looked like a cool effect to me. Did you guys like it? No, it is a cool effect. Although you think people would be onto it by now and know, oh, I shouldn't wear this ring. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> it's still a mystery to most folks not to have that ring with them. Well, they, they didn't know that it was watching them until Seth sees it. To, much later, at the end, much later at the end of the movie. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, they don't seem to realize it, and yet these rings are all over the place. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just it that out. one ring. There was another one, wasn't there? Were there a couple of more? Am I crazy? No, just I thought I saw more rings. There's only the one ring. Okay, sorry. Just them all. I, I must have fallen asleep <laughs> and woke back up. Yeah. Thought I was in well, if you notice, all the witches were missing an eye. Like those eyes, I'm guessing, are what the eye in that ring. Mm, okay. Yeah, because we see later on. Um, I'll just jump ahead. I don't care. We see later on when uh, when Seth stabs into the ring, the one the witch grabs her grabs her eye, <laughs> like she like, yes, like yeah, she yeah. got stabbed in the eye. So the shark flies away when it's eventually daytime again, and we see through her eyes, and we see where Kiri and the other slave girls are, are being taken, and they're on, on their way to be sacrificed. And they're described it's... as six women in white. Those are not fucking white dresses. They're like <laughs> gray. Off white, maybe a little cream, but not a one. There's nothing in that world that's fabric that's white. It's such a dirty world. Like if you make a white thing, it's instantly not white anymore. Beige, stucco, off white, mm -hmm. eggshell, whatever. Yeah, you know, there's some semblance of white. Then of course the guys follow them. And they don't show this, but we, you know, we get the raft scene where uh, the priests are taking the girls down to the raft, and the guys get to the the guys are already there at the raft. In disguise, ha, ha you know. Yeah, getting ready to cross Brandywine River. Yeah. <laughs> what? But I don't even get that. Because you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, Joe. That's why you don't get the reference. Okay. I was gonna let it go. I was just glad to see John Amos half naked now. <laughs> Wasn't he already half naked? I mean, not yet. He I mean, was wearing he's... his pilgrim garb so far. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, he's just half naked, wearing more leather. There, that's for you, Joe. <laughs> Um, yeah, the priest really tries to drown Kiri, and that's not much of a sacrifice, because you're just drowning her in a river instead of burning her like Max has been doing. He's but, not trying, know. but he's not trying to drown her. He's trying to discipline her. Oh. I yeah. took it as, all right, we're going to kill them all now, right now. No. Cause that's yeah, not yeah how, I think he was just trying to That's not her. how yeah, sacrifice works. Yeah. yeah. And sneak attack by Dar saves her. 
The good guys eventually win in this fight. And then they tie up the priests and are attacked by more priests on the land. And we have to get the raft going. But we see that the raft isn't going fast enough. So they have, to, they have to dump some weight. And Kiri dumps all the priests into the water that were... that Especially the one that was trying to drown her just a second ago. And uh, Seth does his very obnoxious laugh. Ha 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 Sorry. I, what I loved about that scene the most, besides a half-naked John Amos, was the shooting of the arrows, somehow missing them, but continually hitting the that post. one post. Every, <laughs> one post kept hitting that. Missing the human beings entirely, but kept Kid hitting said that, that post. She's like, why did they throw them overboard? They could have used them as shields. I'm like, they didn't need to use them as shields. The only thing the other guys can hit is that fucking post. Stormtroopers. <laughs> That's all I got. We get some more uh, discussion, discussion from uh, Tal and Dar, asking him for his help. Have your cousin ask me. And he gets another kiss from her, willingly this time. And uh, Seth says, I think he's going to help us. <laughs> yeah, very cute. What rolls downstairs, owner and pairs, rolls over your neighbor's dog. What's great for a snack, it fits on your back. It's log, log, log. It's log, log. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's log, log. It's better than that, it's good. Everyone wants a log. Log from Blamo. There's a place where only the strongest dare compete. Who are they? Karate fighters. You control the action. Dragon Kick versus the Red Ninja. Thunderfoot versus Skull Crusher. You control every punch. Every kick. No rules, no referee, no holds barred. Just no contact karate action. The man left standing rules. Yes! Each set comes with two karate fighters. Get your hands on the action. Uh, so we get back to the shitty model town. Sacco sneaks them in. Uh, again, this guy gets a name, but Dar's father didn't get a name. Yep. <laughs> Tao is still wearing the eyeball ring. And Mayax is watching through a scrying pool. Uh, then we come to inside the temple, which I'm just going to call this the Hallway of Death Guards, which is one of my favorite scenes growing up, too. And who's building this armor? Where does all this fucking armor come from? So much to notice all these guys are missing. Why aren't the Death Guards killing each other? That, too, if they're supposed to be, you know, killing whatever they see. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a priest making one as uh, our, our group is looking down from, uh, what would you call that, a... An event or something? Yeah, it's like a yeah, ventilation sure, hole. Vent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the green liquid and leech is put into the ear and turns them into wild beasts, it says. They'll kill anything it meets. They have no fear whatsoever. Of course, our group needs the keys that that priest has in his, like, it's like sitting on a shelf next to him, and Dar lowers down the ferrets, who are his thieves, and of course they get chased by a death guard. Group our group walks down a hallway, and Rue kills. If it's a beast! If they made him into a beast, how come Dark can't just talk to him? I don't think it's that kind of beast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Magical beast. So maybe only the natural ones? Uh, let's see. Rue kills a priest who was about to ambush Dar. Good boy. Good girl. Good, bo good girl. Good girl. Woo. They find the jail and inside the temple. The king's eyes have been burnt out. Dar covers his, his burnt eyes with a not, <laughs> not sterile cloth. Then again, his eyes were burned out so long ago that I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Why were his eyes burned out? Because torture, punishment. Joe. Yeah. Just yeah. because cruelty. Because cruelty is the point, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Because Mayax is all I'm well, in why charge even... now. Wait a minute. If Mayax is so worried about him, why keep him alive at all? Mayax isn't worried about the king. He's worried about Dar. Well, regardless, he's, he's, really, he's worried about him enough that he keeps him alive there in the... Why, why torture him? Just get rid of him. Why keep George, him there? George, can I, can I borrow a, a quote from you? Absolutely. Good question, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I have a catchphrase. That's fucking wonderful. Uh, the witch woman blind star... Or, sorry, hold on. Uh... It doesn't matter. Yes. Go, keep, so. keep going. <laughs> A witch woman sneaks in, blinds Dar, who starts swinging his sword wildly until he uses an animal sight to see her while until she's climbing he, up the wall. he channels his inner Jean-Claude Van Damme from Bloodsport. Right. 
<laughs> Stabs upward and kills her. Then our group finds an exit. The thing is, they really, Dar, Dar should really get used to being uh, shot in the face by a woman with some sort of spray, because then he's a creep. <laughs> well, I mean, that was magical spray and not just pepper spray. I mean, I don't know which one's going to hurt more later on. I assume the pepper spray, because it's real. Uh, the group has to find an exit, and they find a stairwell covered by a hanging skull, which, when I looked at it closer, it actually looks like the bat bird humanoid things, maybe shaped more like their skulls. But you have to really look okay. at it. Tal gets Zed out, and Dar tells Kiri to go and he'll catch up. Of course, because he's the hero. The Death Guards are at the door, along with one chasing the ferrets. They get through, and he's like, a little late. Kiri and Dar escape through the air shaft. They escape on a rope, and the Death Guard tries cutting it, making green sparks from his spikes hitting the stone, which I don't know what metal his spikes are made of, but I don't know if... Or what green... stone that they're hitting? Yeah. Huh. Uh, the gate is closed, of course. He sends the ferrets up with uh, via the hawk to chew through the thick rope. Uh, guard up there <laughs> decides he's going to try to cut one of them in half with his sword. And ends up getting bit in the dick by the other one. Yep. Because <laughs> ferrets are smart enough to recognize any of that. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a human being with a bladed weapon about to chop my life partner in half. Just screams no, all bitch, con and bites. All concepts that ferrets can really grasp <laughs> with their brains, the size that they are. Yeah. Uh, the Blind King gives uh, a speech about fighting back. But he, uh, yeah, it's, it's just all bad. He calls Dar a freak who speaks with animals and a coward for not agreeing with him and his shitty <laughs> plan. Sad Dar goes off. Obviously, the king was not a fan of Dr. Doolittle. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not even the remake. Not even the sequel with the little girl. How could he not? Nope. Sad Dar goes off. He, he's, he's blinded by his hatred, you he's say. blinded by his hatred. Uh, Kiri asks him to leave with him, but... Or he asks Kiri to leave with him, but she can't because... Reasons. Because then the movie could be over. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we just leave all these losers? I mean, there's zombies piling all around this fucking village. The king details... She's like cousin to the king. She can't just leave. Well, she's, she's royalty, I guess. I think she's like a niece or something. She's cousin to Tao, which is an interesting right. note later on. Which means they could have just fucking beheaded the king and said, all right, Tao, you got it. Right. Uh, he like, this guy's an asshole. Seth. Yeah, the king's an <laughs> asshole. Uh, Max is watching because of the eyeball ring, and then that's when Seth sees the eyeball out and stabs it in, you know, right in the eyeball with a stick. Injuring a witch woman, which I've always loved that part. Yeah, because to be fair, you don't really need something sharp to, you know, stab an eyeball out with. A stick yeah. will do the job. He could have poked it with his finger. <laughs> and she'd be like, damn it, what the hell was wrong with you? Well, this is not a Three Stooges movie. <laughs> two eye, two oh! eye rings together, oh! get, so you can do the two finger thing. <laughs> Seth tries to reason with the king, but oh, he's not he he's on his side. Hey, oh, 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 oh. You know those weird sounds they make on Three Stooges. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. It's like watching uh, Army of Darkness all over again. Yeah, Seth tries to reason with him, but he's like, nah, fuck you, we're still doing this shit. And of course, uh, the next day, Sacco, the guy who has a name, but while Darth's father didn't have a name, finds Dar in the desert, because that's easy to do in the middle of the desert. <laughs> the attack failed and everyone's going to be sacrificed. All the named characters are going to be sacrificed. Not every single soldier that he was able to raise, which was probably like ten of those villagers. Mm. Uh, back at the temple, Seth, Tal, and Kiri are dressed in robes to be sacrificed. Same robes that that kid from earlier was dressed in. Same robes as that little kid. Like, there were no context clues. Well, they have limited fashion, they have limited fashion choices, George. I mean, what do you want from them? Wear anything else but that when you bring your kid to the fucking sacrifice party. <laughs> Maybe that's all he had. Have, These are very poor people. We have red, we have beige, uh, we have orange and beige. You can mm -hmm. always just wrap a fucking towel around the bottom and send the kid out. Like, nobody cares. Right. <laughs> we could, you could have not taken your kid to the temple that day. Yeah, let's, stay see home. This, let's see how this plays out. Be the atheist <laughs> in that fucking group. Stay home. Yes. Atheism is, atheism is the right answer in this case. Stay home on Sacrifice Sunday. <laughs> Which is apparently every Sunday. Well, mm -hmm. who, who am I? Uh, so, Max tells Zed that his family's gonna die, which is nice. Dar fights his way to the top of the temple, all by himself. Those guards suck at their job. Mm -hmm. Seth and Tao get loose and fight. 
Which, the rich woman, whichever one is left, one, two, or three, I don't know, tells May Mayax that he's doomed and the unborn son has arrived. The prophecy. We get more sword fighting on the top of the temple, right in front of the fire pit. Now, if, I, if, the, witches, if the witches were all that convinced that this is going to happen anyway, why did they stick around? Yeah, I, was, I was just thinking that, like, you know, they could have stopped all of this at the start. They could have just gone to the king and been like, hey, you're number one guy. He fucking hates you. He's going to kill yeah. your kid. He's going to kill your wife. You should do something about that asshole. We will work with you. He's an asshole. He's a real, like, he's such an asshole. Like, even the witches should be able to see it. Yeah. What they don't tell why us, would they, why are they with him? What they don't tell us until we find out later on is that Mayax has been working with the Juns, and they're the reasons he's in power. I mean, yeah. We, but the witches are more powerful than any of them. Yeah, because they, they You know what? Stuff. I bet, I, I bet Mayax, he's probably a witch master. He's a witch master? Master of the witches. Oh, Jesus Christ. I should have saw it coming. Masters all the way down. <laughs> They're master baiters. <laughs> He's a master debater. <laughs> uh, then we uh, let's see. We've got some more sword fighting on the temple, right in front of the fire pit, which is always a great place to sword fight. Uh huh. And Max puts a knife to Zed's neck, and then we get the reveal to our hero that he is the real son, the real chosen one. Yeah, this asshole is your father. How does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, that, that really seems to go nowhere. There's no great reunion. No one's happy about it. Just like, well, no, good, that, and that's exactly how it should be because the guy was an <laughs> asshole. Like, oh, oh, that's that's no, well, well, fuck. Twelve hours ago, he called me a freak. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> I've got this fucking tiger, this thing, this eagle, and these ferrets that fucking love me. Fuck you. Yeah, uh, Max then kills the king, which is. Great. And nothing of that no, could have done it earlier. Nothing of value was lost. <laughs> nothing of value was lost. This could have, this could have happened hours ago, uh, years ago, years ago, months ago, Dar weeks ago. Dar stabs one of the witch women, but she sta she turns into a, bir into a bird and flies away, which I guess is the explanation of how the army comes in later on. Uh, Max tries to kill Dar, but gets bit in the neck by Kodo, and the two of them fall into the fire, and there's an explosion. <laughs> From what? <laughs> Why are things exploding? <laughs> oh, it's the ferrets. The ferrets are explosive. <laughs> the ferrets, yeah. <laughs> uh, my note there is another Kodo dies because the white dog was also named Kodo. Stop naming your pets Kodo, Dar. Mm. And yeah. then just out of nowhere we see the Juns are coming. They're, uh, the dust being flown up from them, their, them and their horses. Like It was an instant call to arms as soon as Mayax died. I always imagined that they were on, like, one of those uh, doomsday timer things, right? Where if you don't send the email by this time, a thing happens. So Max would be, like, sending messages out to keep them at bay. And if anything happened to him, then that message wouldn't get sent, so they'd come in. Every 30 seconds, he's like, send, send, send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the judges were just <laughs> chomping at the bit. <laughs> Are we dead yet? Can we go? No, not yet, Mike. Stop it. Brian, stop it. What are the gens doing when they're not there? Pottery, Joe. You know, pottery. Pottery. <laughs> <laughs> or are they are they like the anti Spartans? Or are they dancing at the at the uh, at the bar in police academy? Who knows? All that leather. <laughs> the blue oyster. Yep. That song yeah. is called El Bimbo. Just so you know. <laughs> that has a name. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and it's even more awesome that you know that. We covered it on the show. That's right, you did. Uh, we get some people going, we should fight! We should flee! They turn to Dar because he's the king. Oh no, he's not the king. He has no power here. Why are we looking to him? Well, he's he technically is the king, but he doesn't know that. Or yeah. nobody else and knows that. Do they didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. We'll fight. Also, he's just still a stranger to him. Why would they listen to anything he says? Who's this guy? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Who's in charge now? Why are we listening to this guy who's half naked all the time? <laughs> we managed to have cloths to cover ourselves. Yeah, but they kept listening to a guy that had cloths covering himself, and that didn't work out great for them. So why don't not listen to the half naked guy this time? I guess half naked John Anos. What should we do? No. <laughs> um, that's right. They have to listen to the, the half naked white guy. They can't listen to the half naked black guy. But the yeah, half naked yeah. white guy does listen to the half naked black guy, and that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I think. That's, I have no idea. The, the math Let's wrap this weird, baby up. Let's works. get to the ending. <laughs> Seth says to cover the moat, which is a good plan. Yeah, we'll, we'll which, see by that the way, on. the moat seems to be a flammable tar. Yeah. 
they don't they don't really say what it is, but it's definitely a tar or like oil substance. Yeah, it's yeah. And aren't moats supposed to be deep? I mean, they can just basically swim across. <laughs> I don't know. It just it, it, I don't know. It just doesn't seem that deep when they're falling into it. They're just getting right out of the water. The horses aren't even like it's it's only up to the horses' bellies. It's waist deep for a human. Mm -hmm. Most humans, but whatever. I mean, it's yeah, it's not deep at all. Uh Dawson Shirok off with the Bat Bird humanoid token, calling off for his newest Pokémon. Uh the Wicked mm -hmm. the Jun battle. The the music there was really cool. I like the music a lot. Of course, they think the moat's the moat is uh Further away than it is, and uh, they of course fall into the moat, the tar, and then we see Dar and Tal trying. Uh, Jesus Christ! They couldn't have had a better plan than send somebody with a torch to light the fucking thing on fire. Yeah, you well, can't light an arrow on fire and fire it from the fucking wall. They send out the king, the new king. They send out him to do it. The little boy. <laughs> That's their plan. None of them had an arrow, a crossbow. Nothing. In fact, that whole yeah. village pretty much lets these guys do the fighting. They stay behind the uh, wall. Mm -hmm. Are you guys named characters? We're good. <laughs> uh, of course, Tal takes an arrow to the chest. Because, yeah. Well, it's still his shoulder. It was, it was more like... Conveniently. It looked more like we the are middle in... of... Oh, go ahead. We don't need to, to d dissect this anatomical strike of an arrow. <laughs> it's a non-fatal upper torso wound. Keep moving. Fine. He's down for the count. <laughs> yes. Dead, Dar fighting the head Jun, who has like this fallout out axe weapon, which looks cool, but doesn't seem Not really Not highly wheezy. practical, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he disarms Dar. Dar sort of st stuck, uh, stuck in the bridge. Uh, Dar tackles him off the horse. A lot of, it's a mediocre fight scene at best here. Uh, the flames with... in the background really make it. Yeah, the, the special effects in the back add to it, yeah. But the fighting itself is meh. Uh, it ends with Dar grabbing him by the one horn on his helmet and spinning him into the fiery moat, which wasn't really all that fiery at that point. Uh, our named characters get surrounded and all hope is lost. But then, but then, the birdbat humanoids fly in. Yep. And it's their Thanksgiving dinner. It's Friendsgiving. <laughs> it's Friendsgiving. Why these birds care about this? I mean, yeah, maybe it's just like this is a great meal for us. Maybe that's it. Although then why not eat him? Yeah. Let's eat everybody there. Why why be selective? I'm sure they all take taste equally delicious. Yeah, but they're all a good full after they eat the Juns. Which I love that What would you say? Their acid dissolves everything except for bone and leather. Hmm. Leather. <laughs> <laughs> uh and we get, I guess, the next day, or probably a couple days later, Dar saying his goodbyes to everybody. Of course, he's leaving because he's the hero. Um, Seth sees the brand on his hand for the first time in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see it when he shook hands with him before. Nothing else. It was you who was first born. And it was you who should be king. No, not me. I'm out of here. By the way, well, did we address this? Why would they brand him if they weren't planning on him being king? No, they branded him as part of the sacrifice ritual. Yes, yeah. but why do that? Because it's him... part of the sacrifice ritual. <laughs> it was to mark him as the one who, sh who needed to be sacrificed. So then we can all recognize... Not, no, son. it okay. wasn't for any human to recognize. It was for the god R. His requirements were that before you slaughter this infant in my name, you have to brand it with my symbol. Because... Good. It's a fucking god, Joe. Go ask it. <laughs> For the same reason, his brother has the same mark in Beastmaster 2, which we will cover uh, next week. No, we Thank will you. not. <laughs> we so will not. <laughs> not that this isn't fun, but we're not watching that. Sorry, I just had to, <laughs> I, I just had to throw that in there. Um, I'm saying this for Joe's sake. Joe, do you want to do Beastmaster 2? No! <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we have some falling actions. Dar leaves his caber for Tao, which, why? He doesn't even teach the kid how to use it. Whatever. Tao's supposed to be... He's not supposed to be able to use his arm because of his injury. But he climbs to the top of the temple immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we see Dar in the desert, leaving. And is somehow snuck up on by Kiri in the middle of the desert with nothing... No cover whatsoever. <laughs> uh, then we get... Uh, Poto has two little baby ferrets in her satchel. To replace her and 
the other one, I guess. So when she dies, there's two more. And we get a nice helicopter shot of Dar and Kiri kissing. And that's the end of the movie. The best shot in that end of the movie is where Rue and the fucking ferret just boop noses with each other. Yeah, yeah. The boop noses was good. That was the, the <clears throat> best part. Of, I think that, was the, that was the best part of this movie was that <laughs> moment. I don't know. My favorite part of the movie was when it ended. When it ended? Come on, you had some fun. When I saw the so yours was slightly was after my favorite part. <laughs> yes. When I saw, oh, thank God this is over. I thought, wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ra. Whoever the hell that is. What was the, the God? R? R. Which is just raw backwards. R. <laughs> Jeez. R. He's a letter. Our God is a letter. A-R. Yeah. A-R. A-R. Ah. Or that, I'm sure they just abbreviate it to R because people are lazy. You know. Mm. Uh, some IMDb notes. The uh, eagle refused to fly in queue all the time. The sheet footage of it in the air. It was dropped from a trapdoor in a hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. Uh, we already talked about the bear getting loose. <laughs> That's just not safe. Poor um, tiger. Yeah. According to the, the director, the original camera negative for this film was lost. Yep. Contrary to practice to standard practices, it was stored in a private house, which was sold, and is not known what happened to the cans which housed the negative. He has, he has asked the public for help. Yep. <laughs> you got one job to do, man. Keep your movie together. Uh, the real, real professional. Yeah. The film performed only modestly at the box office, but it built a strong cult following over the years. In the U.S., it was replayed frequently on TV, notably HBO and TBS. Shown so often that some dubbed TBS the Beastmaster station on HBO as Hey Beastmaster is on. Producer Dino De Laurentiis liked the movie and offered Don Coscarelli to direct Conan the Destroyer. Coscarelli declined because the script was bad. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell? Did you read that one? How would he know? <laughs> uh, Darsh Black Tiger is actually a regular striped tiger dyed black. The dye would wash off around the mouth whenever the tiger took a drink, like, just like George said. So the stripes were often visible around his mouth. Yay. Uh, Mark Singer referred to Dar's costume as a leather hula skirt. When he and John Amos saw each other on set for the first time in their costumes, they burst they out laughing. burst out laughing, yep. <laughs> yeah. And who can blame them? Yeah. Uh, we're both naked. I'm <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit more naked than you are. Director originally wanted black leopards to, to portray the cat, but the animal trainers told him leopards are very skittish and notoriously hard to work with. When they suggested using tigers, he had committed, commented that he didn't like the, the stripes. So Fuck the trainers, you, Don. Yes. Fuck you. <laughs> yes. So the trainers agreed to dye the tigers. Cases of Lady Clairol hair dye were kept on set for touch-ups. Despite this, the dye often washed off in spots and stripes shown through in certain lighting. As a Bengals fan, fuck him. Oh, the Bengals as are the a, team from as Cincinnati. A fan of, as a fan of endangered species, fuck him. Well, that too, that too. As a fan of movie making, fuck him. Should, should I tell you guys about uh, the uh, when we got to Pet Tigers? You're not going to like it. Let's not. Oh. Let's okay. not. <clears throat> Joe Exotic. Uh, 25 ferrets played Kodo and Poto. Ferrets can't really be trained, so they were often baited with food to go or look wherever they were needed. Four tigers played Rue. The main one was named Kipling. That's nice. Tawny Roberts often flirted with child co-star Josh Milrad to annoy co-star Mark Singer. Milrad never complained because he was at that age where I found girls interesting. And yeah, she's Tanya Yikes. Roberts and she's flirting with you. But from that perspective, yeah, she's Tanya Roberts, who was, let's say, late 20s, maybe? Yeah, at least. Flirting with a child young enough to not be allowed on the set at the same time as the tiger. Yes. Huh. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was actually next. Uh-huh. I know, I'm favorite, good at this. Yeah, and you're reading IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> I love having one, two monitors. <laughs> my favorite one is... Don Coscarelli claims to have read all of Andre Norton's books as a boy. Norton is the author author of the movie, the novel called The Beastmaster, on which the movie is loosely based. No, it is fucking not. I, I looked up the the uh, Wikipedia for it. Nothing between the two are alike other than the title. They bought the rights to the book just for the title. 
Uh, the film is known as Miracle Master in Japan. Nothing else really. Um, oh, besides the dog breathing in the scene where the village was destroyed. Yeah. In a deleted scene curing his sex with Dar after he was banished by King Zed, it was so cold that night that as soon as the director yelled, Cut! Crew members rushed in to cover Tanya Roberts with blankets. I'm sure they were... How naked were they? I mean, they were already half naked as it was. I'm certainly so sure they were reality. slightly more naked than they were the rest of the time. We need the loincloth. Now I'm naked. <laughs> and that's, that's all I got, guys. Um, do you have so, any uh, final notes or anything else? Well, listeners of um, Talk Wednesday... Oh, shit. Talk Talking Whatever, whatever Wednesday. Wednesday. Talking Whatever Wednesday. Listeners of Talking Whatever Wednesday, you can contribute to the IMDb page if you can answer this. By what name was the Beastmaster, 1982, officially released in India in English? So, I'm sure one of your eight listeners knows the answer to that question and can update this page. Which, by the way, that is what I see at the bottom of every fucking IMDb page, is that question about whatever movie it is. Hmm. By what name was it officially released in Eng India in English? In India? What does that even mean? <laughs> well, they don't speak English right, in but India. By what name was it officially released in India in English? Would Beastmaster have not been an okay name in India? In no, but every movie, every movie has this question at the bottom of it. It's like the one question hmm. that IMDb can't ever get an answer to, apparently. <laughs> well, they do change, like, um, they do change the names of movies. I don't know much, so much in India, but I remember, uh, like, for uh, a movie called Sleeper, uh, a Woody Allen movie called Sleeper, they change it to Woody and the Robots. <laughs> so they do things like that. That doesn't sound better. That <laughs> I, I I know too in the, in England when Free Willy was released, they called it something else because Willy needs penis, I guess, in England. So you don't want a free Willy. It means it here too. <laughs> a Willy means the same here. I don't know why they didn't change it here. <laughs> that's just been in my head since the early nineties when I first heard that. I was like, ha, that's funny. Twelve year old me. Well, you know they had to change the name of um the Mike Myers movie, The Spy Who Shagged Me, because shag is a dirty word in like in uh, the UK and yeah, such. Yeah, I figured that's why they had it called that, because shag means, like, had sex with or, you know, fucked, but... Yeah, but, but in America, you can get away with it, and the other country's like, no, you can't say shag! Ew, shag, ew! It's horrible! That's my British voice. Is George ew, or is he just standing shag. right still? No, I'm, I'm, I'm standing oh. really still, I'm... Scrolling around IMDb while Joe makes weird noises. <laughs> George is bored. So I have enough time. You can ask like one good question that you really want to ask. Um, hmm. I don't have any really good questions. I was just uh, generally like, how did you guys get together? How did you guys first start? You know, when did you decide we should do a podcast? What brought you two together? All right. Well, do you want to take? Yeah, that I George? decided I wanted to do a podcast when I learned that podcasts existed, and that was in okay. like 2007. Uh, I used to listen to a podcast called Skeptiles that Joe does with, or used to do with two other white guys, and that it, it, I listened to it. And Joe at the time was putting together these open mic nights in Manhattan. When I moved to the area and started working at Con Ed, I'm like, okay, well, shit. I might as well show up to one of these things. And so I did. And that's how I met Joe. Um, we became friends. Almost stopped being friends because I kept using the N-word. I stopped doing Holy that. Shit. And then... <laughs> the Joe's not going to deny this. This is fucking true. No, no, no. This is all true. Um, yeah. But The real question is why I stayed friends with him. But never mind. Go ahead. But at some questions. point, I mentioned, you know, wanting to do a podcast. And Joe wanted to be a performer. And... You know, thinking, hey, he wants to do a podcast. So he kept on me about the fact that I said, hey, I want to do a podcast. And eventually we started the podcast. Yeah, because Skeptiles was dead by that point. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I, I actually like, and I'm, uh, and eventually I just stopped doing stand-up, but I still like doing podcasting. So I threw myself into this. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's how we, we met. He was a fan of a show I did. He eventually came down to see me do stand-up and we just got along. And then he decided, you know what, it's okay for me to say the N-word around Joe, right? He's no, black. No. And I'm, I'm friendly with black people, so I now have license to... I don't know white people I think. I have officially <laughs> a black friend. I can do anything. You have a black friend. They're like, oh, now I can... He's not the first one to do this to me. Like, why do you people do this? What makes you think... I don't even use the word. What makes you think I want you to use it? So the context <laughs> here 
was, <laughs> and it doesn't make it any better. I'm not. This is not exculpatory. Oh, let's. My, yeah, let's. My yeah. thinking was, I would rather. Okay, if you say a placeholder for a slur, then the person listening is going to ha hear the slur in their head anyway, in their own voice. So I'm going to take responsibility for it and make sure that they hear the slur in my voice. And what Joe pointed out to me was that within five minutes of hanging around me, he'd heard it more often than he'd heard it in like the last decade as a black person living in Manhattan. And I'm mm. like, oh, oh, I'm doing a really stupid, horrible thing. I should stop doing that. So I stopped doing that. So the context clues were there and you just had to pick them up. <laughs> Well, I swear, I mean, almost like, uh, say, like, uh, like, I, why am I talking to this guy? He's an idiot. <laughs> He's using the slur about, I mean, I like him and everything, but now you just can't stop. I'm like, uh, but again, I, he's not the first one to do this to me. Like, I don't, I don't get, I don't know why. And it's always been and white that, dude. Always. That's the part that boggles my mind. Like, really? Like, I'm not uniquely stupid? <laughs> no, you're not uniquely stupid. Like, so... <laughs> I've seen this a couple of times where other white guys think it's okay because you hang out with a black guy enough. Just like your situation. Oh, we're cool. He lets me say it. Yeah, maybe he lets you say it. That doesn't mean anybody else is letting you say it. That doesn't mean it's cool for you to say it ever again. Or that you should be saying it, you know? Don't yep. do that. I've actually gotten, I nearly got into a fight with a guy who said exactly that. Um... I, we'll wrap this up, I, I swear. But the uh, I was doing an open mic somewhere, and the guy's like says the starts talking to me. We have a back and forth because he's like being a jerk, and then he says the n word at me, and I get off the stage and <laughs> ready to punch his face out. And then and the other comics say, "Please don't do that. If we do that, we're gonna they'll throw us all out of the bar, and there won't be a show here anymore." And I said, "Okay, well, fine, but I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna deal with this asshole." And the guy says, and he tries to defend himself, saying, "Hey, I get to say it to other people. I said it, and nobody else sees it." Mind. Jesus like, Christ! I'm not. You're not my friend. We have no relationship. I just met you today. You've never even been to my house. I don't want you to say. I don't give a damn what other black people who I also don't know have said to you. I don't think you want you to be saying that to me. And don't ever call me that unless, if you don't want to get popped in the face. Do you think there was a meeting or an email chain between all black people? You know, like, I can say with him, so it's obviously okay, right? Oh, that's not that's this, not what that, black Twitter is? <laughs> <laughs> that is a... You guys may be too young for this. That was actually a joke in the 80s where they would say, oh, don't black people have meetings? But that was seen as a joke. But this, see, apparently, white people really do generally think... Black people just have meetings. We all get together and decide these things. We all know each other, and we all decide on the same thing, and we're all on the same page. So I think the only race that has meetings like that is uh, white people, and they usually have crosses on fire. Those are the only meetings I can think yeah, of. Yeah, they have those, those <laughs> white outfits with the hoods. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, those. They all match, so that's nice, but everything else, that's not. <laughs> and on that note. On that lovely note. Yeah, on that note, uh, guys, where can everyone find you? Because obviously they've come to your show, from, come here from your show. Let's be real. Um, but let's get, where can we find you? You can go to dtswpod.com and you can get us there. You can also find us by just searching Does This Still Work on any podcast app that you have. And if you can't, please email us at dtswpod at gmail.com and tell us that you couldn't so I can figure out why. <laughs>